slightly. Check out, check out Twitch. Make sure we're still nice and pretty. Pretty. Are we gonna be all pretty, pretty on Twitch? Your friend Squeaky Bear Gamer has started watching. So if you're watching a podcast that you're in, is that like arrogant? Yeah. Uh, yes. Incredibly. And I do it every Gee, week. Thanks. It's okay. I do. I watch all of my own. Con- con- I watch all of our con- content, but I watch my own videos as well, which is weird. And and that's not just when they're loading. Like when they go up, I'll sit back and watch watch it. And be like, did this turn out okay? I hope this turned out okay. I'm gonna watch the whole thing, make sure it turned out okay. That's like Aziz talking about visiting Kanye. He's <laughs> Kanye sitting there listening to his own music. These beats are dope. <laughs> I mean, he's right. <laughs> kind of. Not really. I'm not oh, Kanye, right. So what are we talking about today? All right. Well, first and foremost. foremost welcome ladies and gentlemen today is april the 12th 2017 is today april yes today's april um it is it is may May. we're we're in may man the months fly by it today is may the 12th 2017 gamer culture is the drive passion and dedication to all things in gaming by the grand geek gathering the ever-changing world of gamer culture involves communities of all types the evolving industry that surrounds us and the people who use it for the betterment of all we don't need the character select because everyone knows who we are. We are Wildcard, Squeaky Bear Gamer, and Kuma. And the total of eight views we're going to get on this, people already know. Woohoo! No bookworm today. She's busy, unfortunately. She's doing important things. Yes. And know. onward. So today we are talking about gaming leaks. And if I had been smart about this and known it was before today, I would have leaked that there was an episode today. <laughs> wow, and that, I that would and, have been very meta. And I should have leaked what the what, what we were talking about. That so I'm I'm gonna leak it now. We're talking about leaks before we actually talk about leaks. Car, oh no! How could you? Oh, everything's <laughs> ruined because gaming leaks are terrible. Are they? They're bad. I don't like. Them. Why? No, okay, so. First off, right off the bat, like when we talk talk about gaming leaks, it's any kind of information that comes out usually before the dev or pub- publisher or whoever means for it to come out. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they do have the intentional leaks. I don't really consider those a leak, though. What, what about you guys? Uh, I don't know. An intentional I leak. Don't really... An intentional leak is an announcement. It's not a leak. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anytime I think of a leak, I think, okay, they didn't mean for this to come out. Someone broke embargo. Someone snuck out some pictures. Like someone went data mining. Somehow they got some info that they didn't, that wasn't meant to be out. And I don't like gaming leaks that happen like that because it can really ruin the perception of what that thing is. Mm -hmm. So for me, take for like hypothetical situation. Say that someone had said, oh, there's this company uh, that are making these controllers for their new console. Say they're talking about like the HTC Vive, where they have those little like hand controllers. Mm -hmm. No one knew that this was going to be a VR thing. All people saw were these hand controllers. If people just saw these hand controllers, like here's pictures of these new controllers that they're working on. People have been like, the fuck are those? Like, are we supposed to It's a Wiimote. yeah, like, is that the new Wiimote? Is that, like, is it is this, like, a mech game where we, like, am I, do I get to play D.Va now? What's going on? Um, people are going to have, like, a weird perception, and then they're going to have to release information early that they probably weren't ready to release and say, oh, no, we're, we're coming out with a, a 3D uh, game-playing console thing called the Vive, where those are the controllers. Um or other times, you know, they'll you can release information out of con- context, and at, then you run into the trouble of okay, well, it's out of con- piece of information out of con- context. Like, oh, we're releasing images of Pokemon early. You know, that happened with um, uh, Sun and Moon. You know, the images of, of the Pokemon got leaked really early, so everyone was like, are these real? Some of these look kind of weird. 
some of the shiny ones are kind of odd. Are these just photoshopped mm-hmm. recolors? And it kind of hurt people's perceptions of the game because people who might have been turned off but, by these Pokemon late in the game, but, but they've seen the ones they like. What? At the same time, I'm going to defend leaks here and say yeah. it gives it gives a sneak peek of what's coming as long as people are understanding that this is under development. This is not ready yet. But here's a sneak yeah. peek of what's coming. But gamers are dumb. Are they? I mean, we're yeah. here. That, that's kind of that's like a, a broad argument. statement right there. I would like it if you were a little bit more specific about okay. which group of gamers are dumb. <laughs> gamers are very exci- excitable. We see something that we think is cool, and we get really exci- excited. That's the point of hype, right? We see a Speak game that we for like. for yourself. Yes. Okay. Speak for yourself. All gamers are like this. Generalization. All gamers. There is black and white. A and B. No, Kuma, Kuma represents this kind of gamer. I am common collective. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's, <laughs> it is a very common trope with gamers that we are a very excitable bunch. Now, there's a lot of us who understand mm. that we can rein that in, but in general, generalizations, a lot of people tend to buy, are very easily bought into hype. And hype can be a very damaging thing. We've talked about this before. You know, when you're, if you're releasing this information, it can be very easy to get overexcited about something, maybe hype yourself up too much, and then it comes out and it didn't meet it. On the opposite end of the spectrum, maybe something comes out and you think, oh, God, fuck, really? That? There's a a Pokemon that came out that looks like it's just like a giant colorful fish with these big ass lips. Like Angela. It's a Cthulhu! Fish. Um, and it's the weirdest looking thing. And it's one of those Pokemon that was like, that was a design that the intern made. And they're like, I, I mean, we're paying him, throw it in. Uh, but wait, they're paying their some, intern. I, I'm going to assume some bigger co- companies have to throw away money for it. Okay. I got a buddy that made 16 bucks per hour right out of the college gate as an intern. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you can throw something like that, that out there and it'll hurt the perception of the game. Even if. You would say, oh, I, that's one Pokemon that I don't really like, but that's okay because I've seen 30 that I love. Going right right into it, you're like, oh, God, that's the des- kind of designs your guys are going for for this gen. Uh, maybe I'll skip this one. So I, don't know, I think I think leaks, leaks are a really, really kind of dangerous thing to mess with because you can really kind of mess up her perception of the product coming out. And here's where I say I think you're wrong. Because okay. I think that leaks can actually be very good because it can allow gamers to be able to be constantly thinking about whatever is on the market in the future. So, for example, the whole Twitch – or not Twitch, I'm sorry – Switch um, leaks, especially the new hardware that might be coming out in the future um, – makes me very interested like for example there was like a vr thing i'm like hmm i might be able to get behind that if that's ever a thing and as i'm saying this i'm like realizing it might not be a thing Mm -hmm. it could be completely scrapped i mean yes there are pages and pages of different like um like the blueprints and everything so it looks like it's legit that it was in development but whether or not it's real understand you don't know for sure until nintendo actually releases it but aren't Um, you talking about more announcements like card said no this is like these are leaks that uh these are like um pages that are leaks that have not been released by nintendo themselves okay um i'm also looking at one thing which is um which is by a company that i really love hori that does nintendo products um like um, they do like great controllers and everything. I always buy their controllers for Smash games. So mm-hmm. they are coming out with a new, possibly coming out with a new um, Hori controller for the Switch, which I'm like, ooh, if that's real and they get a new Smash game for the Switch, I'm totally going to get it and I'm totally going to have a ton <laughs> of fun. Because I hate playing um, Super Smash Brothers on my 3DS right now. It sucks. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it on 3DS either. I'd rather use the Pro Controller. Yeah, and nobody plays with me, so on that, unfortunately. Yeah. So I have to play on the 3DS in order to get anybody to play with me. So, I mean, I still think that when you have leaks, it can be it can be very de- detrimental to 
what the devs want because they might they it might be leaked information that isn't ready to be shown and if it's not ready to be shown and it still gets leaked that's going to be really harmful to their product going forward because if people are going to start forming ne negative opinions of something before it's even ready to be seen well one number one that's not fair to the dev because obviously it's not it's not ready it's not ready to be seen you know it's not going to impress anyone it's not done but people are going to latch onto it and assume oh look this is what they're working on right now you know what point it, very few people are going to consider well what point in development is this and a lot of the loudest vo voices on the internet okay let's let's get some let's get some real examples going like the whole reason mm -hmm. that we started talking about this like why i brought this up is because of two things one there was an assassin's creed leak that was yeah, we got the code name Assassin's Creed Empire along with a single screenshot that people assumed it was in uh, Egypt. There was an official announcement a couple weeks later. It's called Assassin's Creed Origins, and it does take indeed take place in Egypt. <laughs> so it only built hype for the game. Yeah. The other the other leak that I want to talk about was from Overwatch. The next three mm -hmm. heroes have been leaked. First one is Doomfist coming up in a few days here. Um, the next one, I don't remember her name off the top of my head, but she's supposed to build up mini walls with her ulti of being able to electrify in between the walls that she built. And the third yeah. one is a Russian gentleman. I don't remember his name either. I think it's like Ivan or something like that, that he's supposed to be a swarm style character. Like he controls like drones. Like little dudes that runs around. Yeah. yeah. Now the Doomfist one is interesting. Because this is actually a really good example of little pieces of information that kept getting released that people just kind of pieced together. And we still haven't gotten a complete confirmation that they actually have anything to do with each other. Each other. But Blizzard hasn't said they haven't. So we had uh, Terry Crews, you know, his white mm -hmm. girls. Uh, Old in, Spice uh, commercials. Old Spice commercials. Um, Mr. Muscles Flex. The power! Um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, he, uh, he, he made a comment on Twitter. I think it was actually The Rock made it about him that said he want, uh, he should do a voice in Overwatch. And then he did a script reading of a bunch of like possible lines that someone wrote for him for Doomfist. And then we got <laughs> a, uh, uh, he, he tweeted himself at Blizzard HQ. Yeah, he tweeted himself at Blizzard HQ, and now we keep getting things that are possibly alluding to Doomfist, like the one map, um, King, no, not King's Row. Um, Numbani. Numbani, you originally were transporting the gauntlet, the Doomfist, to the museum. Now, when you play, play that map, the case has been broken into, and the gauntlet's gone. So... They've been slowly alluding to Doomfist coming out, but we still don't know if it's going to be Terry Crews. Everyone, like including myself, is like fingers crossed. But that's this is a way that I I think we are, are probably going to find out on Overwatch's birthday. Probably. And that's coming so up. That's like what, like a it's like a month. Something like that. Month less less of... than that. It's the end of May. Okay. Yeah. So couple weeks we're gonna know which is cool i'm excited and i think that that's a way to leak info right because a lot, lot of that info weren't leaks they were kind of like almost unrelated things and if that was all part of like one kind of grand uh marketing scheme like good on blizz i mean they tried but... to do that with sombra with the arg but it didn't really work out all that well Ooh, yeah they they should not arg again ever that was horrendous um but yeah, I thought that was a good way of, of doing it. Blizz is usually pretty good about leaks. They're like, hey, here's a piece of information. You guys can chew on it, this for a while. We'll get back to you in a month. Those aren't really leaks, though. I think Valve did the best leak. Back when TF2 was brand spanking new, it used to be that um, each of the heroes would have their own patch and have their own updated items. I think at the time of this, there was only like two or three classes that got updated. I think it was the Scout and the Demo Man were the only ones that got updated. And all the announcements, all the information we got was pointing to a soldier update. And then out of nowhere, the spy was leaked. The The mm -hmm. spy, all the spy information was leaked. And then the next day it was the spy update. Huh. 
Okay. Yeah, kind of a little bait, bait and switch. That's fun. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I, man, TF2 is one of those games that I feel like I could have gotten into that if it was the right time. But by the time people convinced me to play it, it was one of those things where it's like, everyone who plays this game is really good at this game. And I are was, you like, kidding me? You can jump in right now and it's still fine. There are so many different game modes going on. There are, and I know it's like it's one of those things. Where it's like okay, you jump in, and after a little while, you could pick it up. But it again, it was just like one of those. It's like I I, I don't know what's happening. People are shooting me. I'm trying to shoot other people. I'm dying a lot. What is going on? <laughs> um, yeah, it was just one of those things. Like I don't know the, the timing for me. I just didn't get 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 into. Um, the Assassin's Creed one was interesting because that was one of the one of those times where it's like, oh, wait, we were right? Yep. Uh, also, like, ser- seriously, Assassin's Creed in Egypt, that sounds awesome. I I want a Kopesh so bad. Yeah. It's going to be my main weapon. I'm going to get a Kopesh. I'm going to be happy, especially if I can throw that fucker and behead somebody. <laughs> Supposedly. For anyone who doesn't know, Kopesh is like that Egyptian kind of curved sword. Yeah. So Supposedly, apparently... Um, there were a couple developer notes that mm-hmm. it's supposed to take place 4,000 years in the past. They wanted to take place that far back so they have more creative freedom with it and didn't have to, they don't have to do historical accuracy. Okay. They can mess with it. Yeah, by having a lot of the assassins kind of in the same, within like a couple centuries of each other, you kind of start to run out of space. It's a yeah. weird thing to consider. It's like really a couple cent- centuries. It's like... Well, yeah, a lot of these eras, you know, they're different eras for a reason. You know, Renaissance Italy and Renaissance, you know, and Victorian England are kind of spread apart. Yeah, um, and apparently there were there was also supposed to be Greece and Rome in the game, but I think those are going to be they they it was cut content, and I think those are going to be in the sequel after Origins. Okay, I I mean that would be cool, I guess, because seeing Renaissance Italy, you kind of, like with um. With Assassin's Creed 2 and all of its, um, all of its not uh, constituents, um, I don't even know if that's the right word, but it sound, sounds right. Um, you kind of got the ruins of those empires, mm-hmm. so I guess, I guess it'd be kind of cool to see them like in their heyday. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm still waiting for Assassin's Creed Japan. Uh, there was a tease <laughs> of a character that was Chinese. Yeah. See. Look, I'm just saying, I want my assassin nin- ninja. Guys. Why don't you just on. play Genji? Yeah. Because Genji is the worst. <laughs> he is a Shimada. No one likes the Shimadas. I want a more fantasy-based Assassin's Creed. You mean more like Knights and Wizards kind of? Yeah, assassin? like I want Prince of Persia back. Uh, aren't they making an- another one? Nope. No? They stopped making Prince. Insane. They stop. Ubisoft stopped making Prince of Persia because they have Assassin's Creed, and every time they made a Prince of Persia game, they had to pay for the rights to it. Really? Yep. They had to pay licensing. Ooh, I mean, Assassin's Creed was fun, but really, like a lot of the stuff you can do in that, you can do in Assassin's Creed now, anyway. You mean Prince really of Persia? Really, the biggest mechanic. Became... Yes, sorry. Um, Prince of per- Persia. Honestly, but the there was the whole like. Sand. There's the whole mystical element to it, and there were legends to it, and the yeah. Zoroastrianism in the in the reboot. What Zoroastrianism? Gesundheit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the um. That is the religion they go hardcore into the reboot version of Prince of Persia, yeah. the cell shaded one. Oh, okay, I know like next to nothing about that one. That's why. I streamed it. I know. I don't. And I was like, I do, I jumped in, and I'm like. This is cool. It's flashy. I'm not following the story very well. I found the best part I mean, of that. I actually found the best part of that game were the conversations between the Prince and Elica. Yes. Which is good. I mean, if you're going to have a game where it's like 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 that, where you really only have two main characters, you better make them interesting. Yeah. And the best way to do that is to give them good dialogue. So. Yeah. Um, Squeaky. So do you guys have any like particular like super big leaks or favorite leaks? Um, I already kind of mentioned it with the Nintendo Switch. That's kind of the stuff that I've been following mostly. 
There's a lot of rumors, not really leaks, but because of the whole thing that Nintendo said that they're going to be big this year for E3, they're going to be doing a lot of presentations. Many people have been like kind of suggesting, oh, we're going to get Pokemon like a sun and moon on the Switch type of thing. Oh, we're going to get um, Smash Brothers because they Look, obviously Nintendo... did Mario Kart 8. They should do Smash Brothers now. We're getting Kingdom Hearts 3 at E3. Like, Nintendo, just go home. I think this yeah, this next you. E3 screw is you. gonna be a big one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna get. I think we're gonna get a lot of uh, Nintendo announcements. Kingdom Hearts three, more information on it. I think Bethesda is gonna have a really big showing there. I've got a funny feeling. We're gonna see an Elder Scrolls six. I you think so? Know. Yep. What makes That's you kind of, oof, what kind think of that? Is there some info I haven't seen? A while ago. This was a couple years ago at an E3. Um, a Bethesda employee leaked a docket that listed about six items on it. Mm-hmm. And that at uh, E3, you are not to talk about Fallout. You are not to mention Elder Scrolls, anything like that. But the first like three items on the docket, the first one turned out to be Fallout Shelter. Afterwards, yeah. Fallout 4. And then the two expansions to Fallout 4. And then a few more items. One of them was called Project Greenheart. Hmm. This would now. This was two or three years ago. Okay. Plenty of time to work on a Skyrim game. So, or not Skyrim, uh, Elder Scrolls. So, Greenheart. That to me, kind of foresty. Do we think we're going to the home of Valoran? What else? I. People are saying it's either going to be Valoran or Shimmering Isles. Huh. I wouldn't mind Valoran. Shimmering Isles, yeah, I guess. But yeah, either one of those would be fun. Yeah. I'm still waiting for Elsewhere. We're all still waiting for Elsewhere. Oh, you can, there's a mod for Skyrim right now. You can go to Elsewhere. Yeah. But it's not a it's called moon. Line. It's called Moonpath to Elsewhere. It's a modders full on. It's a full on quest. Speaking of mo- modders, um, one of my fa- one of my favorite instances of leaks are whenever people start to data mine games, because I think it. In my, the, my favorite instance is Blizzard games now, like speci- specifically WoW, because everything they don't, everything is data mined. Everything is data mined, and I I think this point Blizzard just knows. Yeah, they know that they don't really have to release a lot of this, this information. Because it's gonna get data mined, so that's honestly my favorite thing about any new expansion or any new patch. Because it's like, oh, how are we gonna get this information about, you know, the new raids or anything? Because unless you read the dungeon journal, which more people should should do, but a lot of people don't, um, you're not gonna know anything about the fights because Blizzard doesn't say it. It's because da- data mine miners exist. They know Blizzard knows now that they're gonna make this information available. But you gotta go in and get. I don't. Data, how data mining works is they see they can see the boss model, they can see the texture files, they can see any zones that are in, or like the textures for the zones. They don't have any of the scripts in it though. They don't. None of the boss mechanics are in when they data mine. It's li- it's literally out. looking. Yeah, it's literally looking at text and images. That's all data mining Which is. is. Yeah, but that's how they, a lot, a lot of times we get the information early is text. They pull the text out of the dungeon journals that are going to be in the, in the expansion. I don't know. So I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen that. Perfect for knowing a boss fight. There's a lot of times where it's like, okay, dungeon journal, what do I need to know as a D- DPS? And I read it and I'm like, that's like a quarter of the information that my raid leaders told me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that's. When and they, Blizzard, Blizzard has gotten that better at that. that. They they know yeah. they know when to put things out to be data mined and when to hold things back. Yeah, which is it's real. I actually like that about them. I like that they're like, look, people are gonna mine it anyway, so let's just drip feed it into the code and they'll pull it out. <laughs> those, right. those guys are watching. We're starting days. to run out of time here. So any final remarks? Final remark for me is, well, sometimes I think leaks can be re- really cool if they're handled correctly by the com- by like not necessarily the company, but if we're able to get little bits of information that are just like, hey, here's a screenshot, here's you know, 
here's a little bit of dialogue or a name or something. That could be kind of fun. When people rip like a bunch of images and then just start inferring things from them, that's when we start getting into da the dangers of leaks. When people start assuming they understand what this leaked content is, that's when you know you get into the ass out of you and me part and part of assumptions. And then should and de it, should developers step in when leaks happen and say this is how it actually is? Yes, keeping your silence once leaks have happened is very detrimental. I feel. Okay, Squeaky, any last thoughts? Uh, really. <laughs> <laughs> I pretty this. much said what I think is I think that um, I think that leaks can be really good um, for keeping the interest in the um, the companies um, in our everyday speech in our everyday talks. Mm -hmm. um, I think that really helps them for that for those reasons, and I think that gamers need to be careful not to take every single leak as truth, mm -hmm. because even when you get like press release stuff even that sometimes is not the truth so you have to just be careful yeah all right true that card what do you think what, what's your final thoughts bubba buoy bubba buoy bubba buoy yeah perfect let's end all right uh leaks aren't that big of a deal as long as you take <laughs> them all with a grain of salt and realize that they are leaks and they're out of context and I believe a developer, sh developer should step in and at least provide context to the leaked images. But, I mean, NDAs are put in for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they really didn't want something to get out, they can come up, they can come down legally, I guess. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. For all of your gamer culture needs, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch TV, and thegrandgeekgathering.com. The show has been brought to you by the Grand Geek Gathering Net Network. Don't forget, to, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review us. Special thanks to the band Alex and Alex for the use of their song, Glam Jam. Don't forget to join the gathering, stay cultured, have a great week, and GGG! -G -G -G.